Origins of Money and the Development of the Modern Financial System by L. Randall Ray Conclusions and Policy Implications This analysis has shown the orthodox approach to money and to policy is historically and logically flawed. Money was not injected into a well-functioning barter economy. Instead, money and the market developed together. This helps to explain why production in a market economy is always monetary production. Money now for more money later. It also means that the money supply in a monetary economy is necessarily endogenously determined. Monetary economies have not, and cannot, operate with exogenous money supplies. Finally, while a monetary economy with an endogenous money supply can operate with a commodity money reserve system, such a system is subject to periodic debt deflations. Thus, in all developed capitalist economies, this has been replaced by an, by an accommodative central bank reserve system. The monetarist policy prescription, close control over the quantity of reserves, represents a giant step backward to an unstable system in which accumulation suffers occasional reversals during debt deflations. Furthermore, monetarist policy would not lead to greater control of the money supply. The supply of reserves, whether of wheat, of gold, or of central bank liabilities, has never determined the quantity of money. Rather, rigid control over reserves would eliminate the primary advantage bank liabilities have over other types of liabilities and would lead to greater use of alternative money-denominated liabilities. This, however, comes at the expense of the, rival, of the revival of debt deflations. Some of those who adopt the endogenous money supply approach argue that this endogeneity is a recent phenomenon, either due to a change of central bank practice, such that it now accommodates the demand for reserves, or due to innovations in banking that have allowed the banks to escape reserve constraints. Footnotes 46 C. Chick, 1986, Moore, 1991, and Nigel, 1990, for examples of a stages approach to money in which the money supply is, exo is exogenous at certain stages. End footnote. Thus, it is argued that the money supply was exogenous in the past determined by the quantity of commodity money. As this analysis has made clear, however, this could not have been the case. The current system, based on central bank reserves, did not evolve out of a commodity money system. Rather, the commodity money reserve evolved out of an endogenous money system to solve one of the problems with a monetary economy. In any monetary economy, the vast majority of assets denominated in the money of account consists of private IOUs, the value of which depends on the economic condition of their issuers. Thus, commodity money, a riskless representation of the social unit of account, was used as a reserve. Privately issued money liabilities were made convertible into commodity money merely to enhance circulation, but the quantity of these was never constrained by the quantity of commodity money in existence. This helps to make it clear that an exogenous money system is not possible in an economy that is based on nominal accumulation. One might imagine a system that could be pa based on exogenous money, but this would have to be a system in which private pursuit of wealth denominated in the money of account was eliminated. Footnote 47. Thus, an exogenous money system might work in a socialist society, where the object of production is to provide goods and services. However, a monetary, capitalist society is based on accumulation of money-denominated wealth, and not on production of goods and services. As Veblen argued, 
The purpose of capitalist production is to produce pecuniary values. The production of use values occurs only as a byproduct of capitalist production. Ray, 1991, B. End footnote. While a commodity reserve system is possible, it is far more unstable than a central bank reserve system. Rather than attempting to constrain the central bank so that its liabilities are supplied as if we had a commodity money reserve system, it is far better to maintain the current accommodative reserve system. It would be difficult to improve upon Took's recommendations concerning appropriate monetary policy in a monetary economy. Quote, the greater the or less liability to variation in the rate of interest constitutes in the next degree only to the preservation of the convertibility of the paper and the solvency of the banks, the most important consideration in the regulation of our banking system. Took, 1959.